Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the disclaimers, in the description box, you're going to find linked in there the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavioral modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill, folks. Please read that article and share on all your social media. We also have LinkedIn Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat and a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding, folks, in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through with their threat. We've got the pertinent links to the Agape boarding school situation as well. Agape Boarding School is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in troubled, so-called troubled male teens that has and pending over 21 allegations, claims, and civil lawsuits, all of them being substantiated by the Missouri Department of Social Services, I might add, that include allegations of sodomy, sexual assault, rape, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, and starvation. You've got one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a student, I'm sorry, a doctor who lives on the premises with full access to the students, I might add, up on multiple substantiated claims by the Missouri Department of Social Services of sodomy, rape, and sexual assaults of the students there. You have an attorney general, who doesn't know how to do his job, and you got a governor who's hyped up on a power trip. So please share all those articles. Don't forget to share and sign the change.org Shut Agape Boarding School Down petition. We got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, Jennifer Masumba's behavioral sheet of shocking offenses, shockable offenses, bleh, a clip of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002, the templates in the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. When we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and we do talk about dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger, parental supervision is advised. Trigger warning, we are about to descend into the mad ravings of a lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear lies. A lot of lies. Logical fallacies that I can tear apart with basically no effort. You're going to hear gaslighting, victim blaming, and abuse apologensia. And you're going to have him claiming that we are responsible for what happened after this school psychologically destroyed students. So, you know, be prepared for that, all right? Okay. Now we're going to descend into this madness. And I'm going to tear it apart with my usual unfailable logic. The post-JRC program may be serving the students by adding the use of psychotropic medications to the student's program, exposing the student to the dangers of such medication. Here we go. Are you Dr. Matthew Israel or are you the lawyer known as Mr. Rottenborn? Because I'm beginning to wonder. Drugs, 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 drugs. That, more than anything, exposes your program for the horrific, insane pseudoscience that it actually is. See, this doctor has no experience in pharmacology. He has no degree in it. He does not know anything in actuality about the side effects or the positives. He uses it as a scare tactic, folks, because he's preying upon this inborn thing that most people have against the pharmaceutical industry. 
I understand that to a point. I do. There are people who prey upon the vulnerable and do nothing but throw pills and put gain billions every year. I'm not an idiot. I have eyeballs. But here's the facts, folks. When you are dealing with a child who's had a full functional assessment done, they have a good program which is shown to work best for their particular to help them deal with their particular difficulties and also be able to help them build off strengths. When you then intermarry that with proper responsible doctors who are introducing medications that are known based on studies and data to work for the particular issues that that particular student is facing. When you have all of these married together, I'm going to tell you, it's a recipe for success. And I can tell you this, not only as someone who's worked in the field, but by evidenced by my own fucking life. See, I had that kind of treatment program where medication therapy, person-centered planning, all married together. And you know what happened, doctor? And remember, doctor, I've told you some of those severe behaviors you talk about that you say you're the only one who can help. I had them in my youth at a great number. But I didn't go to your torture school. I instead had doctors who knew their heads from their ass, who worked closely with my circle of support created with the person-centered planning program, people who cared about my strengths, people who didn't just focus on my behaviors when I was at my worst. And you know what, doctor? Bar a year and a half due to Asking another bullshit because we're taught to internalize our pain and never tell anyone shit. That's another subject. We'll get into that someday. When the JRZ is dead and buried. I have been out on my own. Barring that year and a half, of course. Since I was 19 years old. I am now live on my own. I provide for myself through my own work. I have all the insurance that I need. Money to go see the dentists, go see the doctors, take care of my glasses, take care of my teeth. And it was because... These people were responsible individuals. They did their homework. They did an actual full functional assessment. Okay? This is what leads to success. Now, granted, they did help me get my degree in graphic design. And because this this is an ableist world, and they really don't like me because I've been a very vocal self-advocate against some of the local businesses around here. No, I've never been hired in my field. But that's not due to the fact that nobody tortured me when I was a child, doctor. That's because it's an ableist fucking world we live in. Just saying. This whole thing, drugs, 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 drugs. Let me tell you something about drugs. When I was little, I was misdiagnosed as ADD. I've talked about this before. But strangely enough, the medications that they put me on as a kid actually profoundly, profoundly changed my life for the better. Was there ramifications I'm still dealing with? Because I then had, after that, irresponsible doctors who just kept upping the dosage? Yes, that's true. But when I was in school, when I started having visible difficulties that even my silence couldn't hide, 
being put on Ritalin and then being put on Adderall in high school actually made it to be so I was actually able to graduate from high school and go to college. Your complete idiocy when it comes to psychotropic medication or any medication for that matter is beyond astonishing to me. Okay? You like to run in, but these medicines, they don't work. Medicine is only as good as the doctor who prescribes it. If you have a doctor who knows his business, this is why psychiatrists are extremely important. You're going to find a doctor who's going to hunt and search and research and make sure it's going to be proper medication for the, uh, that acts as a supplement. Supplement. Not that medicine's going to cure everything, but acts as a supplement that works intermarried with the treatment program the kid is a part of. Yeah, you see where I'm going here, right? Anyway, let's move on. The post-JRC program may be just warehousing the student. It may just be feeding, clothing, and housing the student, not trying to actively treat or his or her behavior problems. For example, the program may be allowing the student to wander around or even sleep much of the day without placing any education or treatment related demands on him or her. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can someone explain to me why a fucking 21-year-old who is graduated now needs to still be part of an education program? Doctor. Really? Really? The only reason they need to be a part of any educational program, doctor, is if they are pursuing secondary education. Many of us have had enough by the time we hit high school and just go out into the workforce. Okay? There's a lot of us who do. We put up with some serious, fucking, messed up, psychologically traumatizing shit, those of us who go through the public schools, and some of us have had a fuck enough of it by the time we graduate. But they're just feeding them and housing them and not trying to, to treat their behaviors. Fuck me. Fuck me. Not everything is about behaviors. We have lives, folks. Well-rounded fucking lives. We can't have a life that is always focused on every single negative part about us for the rest of our lives. That's not a life. When all you focus on is a person's negatives and how you gotta fix us, all you're doing is teaching us how to just loathe ourselves, which thanks for that. We already get trauma. Thank you for teaching us how to hate ourselves. Okay? Let's talk about these group homes of which he knows absolutely fucking nothing. He's lying to you, by the way, in case you didn't notice. I worked with group homes. I used to go and visit them with the case managers that were scheduled to go and overlook a particular group home. What they're saying is complete, absolute bullshit. In fact, those people who work in those group homes who oversee them are people who have expertise in our particular area of issues. They do, in fact, use that as a way to help us deal with behaviors in a way and in a living setting that makes logical coherent sense i'll give you an example going to the grocery sale can be fucking going to the grocery get groceries can be a fucking hellscape folks we can hear fluorescent lighting we can hear that god-awful fucking stereo music that they play over the speakers ad nauseum. We go there, and some of the times, those of us who are in the workforce are, it's crowded, it's noisy, people will bump into you, glare at you, condescend down to you, and even cuss you out for no particular reason. It's a special level of hell for autistics, okay? How is that dealt with in a group home? 
In a way, of course, Dr. Matthew Israel doesn't approve of. It's called desensitization. It's called providing reasonable accommodations. Yes, to even help us to deal with the noise, noise-canceling fucking headphones. As a means and a way to accommodate us. So that we will be able to go through the grocery store without wanting to fucking pull our eyes out and like rip out our eardrum. Crazy, right? One little change, one little met reasonable accommodation can then allow us to lead a normal life to the point that our staff can then take us to a grocery store. And with those headphones on, we can then go and get our groceries. In fact, dealing with the sensory issues that come through sound can help us to such an extent that even the very crowded room no longer bothers us quite as much. That is the power of reasonable accommodations. Group homes do this. I have helped them apply for funding to provide these reasonable accommodations, and I've seen the reports cross my desk to show their success. They're lying about group homes. What other things do group homes do? Group homes will have classes inside their homes that will teach these kids how to cook healthy meals. I know because not only did I help these group homes, I lived in assisted living. I was the one who actually ran that particular class in spite of being a resident there, where they had, I would have the whole apartment complex over on Thursday nights. And I would have everybody bring in an ingredient, and we would do a massive cooking class right there where we would all eat together after preparing a healthy meal. I would use that time while cooking to talk about healthy eating and ways of preparing the food. Crazy, right? A lot of those group homes also participate in the programs that are done at the Centers for Independent Living. Centers for Independent Living have classes on how to handle your bills. They have classes on how to cook. They have classes on taking up proper vitamins. They have classes teaching you on how to deal with your doctors. They got classes upon classes that have classes. Many group homes participate in this and will in fact provide transportation to and from these classes. So them to sit there and say with their whole chest that these programs do nothing for these kids but feed and clothe them. That in fact, they will even allow the student to wander around or sleep much of the day. Can I say something here? God fucking forbid that any of us disables not be working every second of the fucking day. God forbid that like our neurotypical peers, we don't have a day where we can sleep the fuck in. God forbid that we don't have something where we constantly have demands put on us. Doctor, we get nothing but demands from neurotypical society. That's all we get. We have to be this. We have to be that. We have to eat this way. We have to live here. We have to dress this way. We have to go to this, do that. We have to have this response, that response, da, 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 da. All we have is a list of demands placed on us by neurotypical society every fucking day of our lives from the minute we wake up in the goddamn morning. Okay? Spare me. I'm going to close out on that. We don't get very many reviews on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have 
a good one. I will see you next video. Bye-bye.